Hey you guys, my name is Jeff. Welcome to the channel. And if you've been here before, then welcome back. You know, this year I want to beat the market. And you know, everyone wants to win at the stock game, right? We all want to do better than the market and win big, but it's really hard. And I think it's always been very hard to beat the stock market by picking stocks. But I think this next year is gonna be even more difficult. So in this video, I am gonna outline my plan for beating the market in the next year, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I plan to get there. It's real hard to pick stocks. So rather than picking stocks, I am going to pick ETFs. And I've already selected five ETFs, and I'm going to show you which ones they are, and I'm going to tell you why I personally am going to invest in these in the next year. This is not financial advice. This is just information to help you guys get a better understanding of exchange traded funds and to learn about the five ETFs that I'm gonna outline for you in this video. The first one right here is VXF, okay? And this is the Vanguard Extended Market ETF. Now, let me tell you what this means, the Extended Market ETF, all right? And I just wanna show you, I've got a visual here. Each of these ETFs that I'm gonna tell you about is gonna be represented by one of these little tubes, okay? So VXF is this part, this segment of a tube, and this represents the extended market ETF by Vanguard. So what this is, is this is an ETF that invests in all the stocks in the stock market in the US that are not in the S&P 500. So if you think of the S&P 500, as the 500 largest companies, this is everything extended out beyond that. So these are not large caps, but these are mid cap and small cap companies. And the reason that I really like this ETF is that you know I already own a lot of large cap companies. I already invest in the S&P 500, as I'm sure some of you do, and I also invest in the Vanguard total stock market. With the extended market ETF, I'm investing into an ETF that invests in a lot of mid cap and especially small cap stocks. So the mid caps I like a lot because I personally have been wanting to invest in some of these mid cap companies. For example, Airbnb. But I don't feel that confident in going all in and buying a lot of Airbnb stock because I don't know how well the company is gonna do in the recession, I don't know whether a lot of people are going to go take vacations, and there's a lot of uncertainty about it, but the portfolio for VXF actually invests in 3,686 different stocks. So I'm not that concerned because Airbnb is just one of those thousands of stocks. So let's go on to the next ETF. And uh, just so you'll know, my plan is to invest equal parts into each ETF. So I'm going to invest about $200 into each ETF. And some of these ETFs cost a little more than 200, so I'll just buy like one share. And for those who, that cost a lot less than 200, I might buy more than one share, but I'm aiming for about $200 into each of these five ETFs. So the second ETF, that I'm going to be investing in is AVUV, okay? And that is the Avantis US Small Cap Value ETF. 
All right. AVUV. So this is similar in some ways to that first ETF we just mentioned in that it invests mostly in small cap stocks, right? But whereas the first one we just mentioned invests, just gonna attach this here. All right. So VXF invests 54% in small caps, but AVUV invests 95% in small cap stocks and only 5% in mid caps. So AVUV is gonna be holding a lot more small cap stocks and of those, they are with a value slant. So these are stocks that generally have a much lower price in relation to the earnings for the companies in each of the portfolios. So the other interesting thing about AVUV to me is that this is an actively managed ETF. Now all the other ETFs I've ever discussed on this channel are passively managed, meaning there's a list of stocks, the ETF is tracking a benchmark or tracking an index, for example, the S&P 500 index, and so they just mechanically go through and buy all the stocks in that index. But AVUV has a portfolio management team. I think for Avantis, there are about three or four people who look at the different stocks and choose the ones that make it into the portfolio. So the expense ratio for this ETF is 0.25, which is a little bit higher than the others in this particular video, but I feel that for active management, that's actually a very reasonable price to pay. I like that they select from the small cap value universe uh, profitable stocks. So they actually have a bias and what they do is they try to avoid stocks that are in money losing unprofitable businesses and invest mainly in those that are already profitable. So anyways, there you go. That's AVUV and that is the second ETF. And now let's move on to the third ETF. Okay, the number three ETF in my portfolio is going to be Sly V. And Sly V is the Spider S&P 600 Small Cap Value E. ETF. So this ETF invests in all small cap stocks. 100% of its portfolio is small cap, and that's really similar to AVUV, which we just discussed. So we're going to add to our ETF ring here, Sly V, all right? So Sly V is an ETF with 465 stocks in it, okay? And I should mention that AVUV had 700 stocks in it. So what we're seeing is a lot of variety and diversification in each of these ETFs. The first one, uh, VXF, had 3,686 stocks. So in this portfolio I'm building, it is focused mainly on small cap stocks with some mid caps, but it's also very uh, diversified as opposed to, for example, the S&P 500, which has 500 stocks and they're all large caps. So let's take a look now at the two remaining ETFs in my portfolio. So let's take a look at the number four ETF in my portfolio. And number four is VHT. And that is the Vanguard Health Care ETF. Now this ETF right here invests in 423 different stocks. So we'll just add this on here. And these are all stocks that are in the healthcare sector. 
So what does that mean? Well, the healthcare sector includes a lot of pharmaceutical companies, it includes hospitals, it includes companies that make medical devices, and health insurance companies. So what I like about this particular ETF is that you know, entering into this recession, there are going to be people cutting back on a lot of expenses, kind of consumer discretionary items that maybe in good times they would have bought, but now they're going to hold off on spending. There are also, you know, stocks of companies in the travel industry and hotels, etc. And, you know, if people don't spend or don't travel, those companies will really suffer. But I feel as though healthcare is one of those sectors that's going to have a lot of prolonged success, not only in the next year, but in several years to come. So for me, investing in VHT is a way to invest in the healthcare sector with you know, one fifth of my investments. And I feel this is just a really smart investment for me. And that's why I have a lot of confident, confidence adding it as my fourth investment in this ETF portfolio. And now, we are going to move on to my fifth and final ETF. And that is VGT. And VGT is the Vanguard Information Technology ETF. So what does this mean? Well, basically this is investing in tech stocks, okay? So investing in this ETF, I'm going to gain exposure to 375 different stocks. Everything from Apple to Microsoft, Nvidia, Adobe, MasterCard, you name it. All these tech stocks. And I like this because, you know, I feel as though if I only had to choose two sectors of the economy that I have a lot of confidence in the next several years, one of them would be healthcare, the other would be tech. I also feel that these tech stocks got really beaten down in the last year and their prices have become, seems to me, really cheap. But it's kind of hard to decide which of these tech stocks is the best bet or the best investment at this moment. So rather than having to pick the perfect tech stock, I'm able to just invest in VGT and get a little slice of all of them. And I should mention that uh, Amazon is not in this ETF, even though it has a lot of tech exposure with AWS. Uh, the index fund that that fits into is uh, Vanguard's uh, consumer discretionary because they kind of consider Amazon a retailer. And also uh, Google or Alphabet is not in this particular portfolio because they put that in as a telecommunications ETF. So uh, if you're looking for Google or Amazon, they're not going to be in this particular ETF but I like the exposure that this gives me to all these other tech companies. And so there you go. Oh, we gotta add this to the collection here. So here is VGT. And now the ring is complete. So let me just talk to you a little bit about why, why these five, you know, I'm really aiming to beat the stock market in the next year. This is kind of an experiment that I'm doing. And I feel that all of investing is really experimental, meaning I never know ahead of time what the best stock or ETF is going to be. But I like trying different things. Either I win because my return is going to be greater than the market averages, or I make a mistake and it doesn't work out the way I'd hoped, but I learned from that mistake so that next year, you know, I cannot do that again. So I'm gonna be investing in these five ETFs during the next year. And my plan is to invest $1,000 each month, which means 200 goes into this one, 200 into this, 200, 200, 200. 
And that way they are diversified. You know, each of these ETFs has hundreds or thousands of stocks in it. And then I get exposure to all different parts of the economy. So I think that, you know, I'm definitely not too concentrated here. It's not like if one of these stocks or a few of them do poorly, I'm going to be in trouble. I feel as though it's a really well diversified approach. Again, I just want to point out, this is not financial advice. I'm not recommending this to anybody. I'm just telling you what I am doing in my effort to beat the market average. So let me tell you why I want to do this. You see, if I were to invest, say, on a monthly basis for the next 10 years, and I got a 7% return, all right? If I put in $1,000 a month, at the end of 10 years, I would have $167,764.53. Now that is a very good return, that's 7%. But if I were able to beat that amount, if I were able to get 5% more, my return would be $213,690.67. So that is a lot more money. And that's simply by improving my returns by 5%. And on the downside, if this didn't work out and I lost 5%, then after the 10 years of investing, I would have $132,615.65. So I would consider that while it's not as much as I'd want to earn as a return, it would be acceptable. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it was useful to you. I'm very interested to hear what you guys think about investing. So what kind of ETFs are you investing in currently? Um, I hope each one of you will just write in the comment section which ETFs you're either investing in now or you're thinking about investing in. And if you have any questions or ideas for future videos, put them in the comment section because I read them and um, I'm real interested in, in hearing which ETFs are interesting to you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Hit the little button and subscribe to the channel, and then you will get a heads up every time I make a new video. So I'm so glad you stopped by, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.